All right. Hi, everyone. Hi, Celestial Citizens. Um, I'm Britt. I'm the founder of Celestial Citizen. And Bailey, my good friend uh, from Colorado School of Mines, we're both in the Space Resources Program. We're going to be doing a little reaction video to For All Mankind. And we're going to start with episode one of season one. We're going to go through the whole thing. um, And we're just going to do like film our, our live reactions to this. Spoiler, I have actually already seen these episodes. Bailey has not. So you're going to get like a very diverse perspective here on. I think, our I think I'm going to get all angry. That's my guess is I'm going to get like <laughs> all up in arms about something really random. <laughs> exactly. That's what we're hoping for. So Bailey, yeah. Why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, I'm Bailey. Um, I tend to get on Bailey rants and super emotional at random space things. So this should be fun. Um, Britt mentioned we met at Colorado School of Mines doing space resources. We're now working on something called lily pad together. So that's really fun. Um, I am an engineer at Paragon Space by day. That's my day job. Um, and we're working on life support for astronauts and um, basically like spacecrafts and stuff like that. So I work on HLS, one of the proposals for HLS. And uh, Britt, before we get too far into this, I wanted, I have a surprise for you. Oh boy. Okay. I love surprises. Okay. I hope you know what I'm trying to say here. Oh no, I don't. Here, does that help? Oh no. no. <laughs> what is the one app you've been trying to get me to download for like two weeks now? You're on Clubhouse. Oh my god, I know my iPhone. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wait, okay, amazing. So you're definitely gonna be in the Clubhouse session tomorrow. Okay. If I can get it all figured out by then, yeah. Okay. yeah. Start, okay. I don't have an Apple products. I've wanted to get on Clubhouse for so long, and Britt's like yes get in here. And I'm like, I can't. So we're finally making that happen. Wow. That's like a really amazing surprise actually, Bailey. I was <laughs> I'm so excited. I went and picked it up just before this, just specifically to be like, Brit, look what I got. <laughs> wow. You've been holding on to that little nugget of information for a oh, while. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Well, that is, that is awesome. Okay. So that's, so everyone who's on clubhouse also follow um, celestial citizen on there as well. Um, just as a little plug. All right. So should we get started here, Bailey? I am ready. I am excited. Go for launch. Stand by for the top. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, this looks three, intense. 2, So intense. Super dramatic levels. <laughs> it's very dramatic. Quite obviously. Yeah, I feel like the video footage is pretty cool. Here and around the world. But also, I get kind of salty when I see all these pictures and it's just like men. Wait, yeah. No, I feel that. I feel a a little bit. Like, I'm really glad we did it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, true. Literally, like, could you imagine? I, I was just thinking this. Like, okay, if I could go back in history, I would just go to different locations on the night of the movie. What yeah. people were doing, you know? Yeah. It's like, you know, youth is wasted on the young, like, moon landing wasted on, like, flat earthers or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> I believe Do you think this is how Russia was? Do you think they were all beaten down? Lander. They're at the bottom of your probably what appears no, to be no. a ladder. A man is about to set foot on the moon. Mm-hmm. These are the words that uh, cosmonaut Alexei Leonov, uh, the first man to set foot on the moon, spoke just moments ago. I take this step for my country, for my people, and for the Marxist-Leninist way of life knowing that today is but one small step on a journey that someday will take us all to the stars. You know, Alexei, the guy, the first person, he's actually the first person to conduct a spacewalk. Oh. Like in real life, like in our history. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. 1965, I think. Wow. That's eerie. They're also devastated. The, yeah, the, yeah. the communist flag, instead of, ooh, Ooh, that's eerie. That's a little eerie. Oh, 
This is hilarious. I don't know who this is, but I feel like I relate to her. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. Could you imagine? Why we don't have to do that. Yeah. I'm out. Nope. No penny hugs. Like the things women had to do back then just to go to the office. I got something to comment on that. I'm gonna write it down for when we're done. <laughs> There's all the astronauts. Ah, a bunch of white guys. That's crazy. <laughs> I suggest you all take the weekend to go out, get drunk, kick your dog, gnash your teeth, howl at the moon, or do whatever suits your purpose. Terrible. We do not condone animal violence on, Come this, Monday morning. on this reaction video. <laughs> we would never do that. <laughs> no. We're back like, to why, why was that advice from like a NASA person? Like, what? <laughs> Terrible. Awful. Really setting a bad example. So, and if you had the, the right equipment and you had the opportunity and NASA is full of smart people, what I can't figure is why they didn't have the guts to let you land. This is not... You got the ball. No, no, please I mean, has always been known for its willingness to push Trying to poke the bear. Poking this bear. You did a great job. I want to just reach down there. Scoop up a handful of moon dust. Yikes. You know, Mercury and Gemini, we hung it out there over the edge every single time we went up. Gemini. Most See, like, am I the only one who says Gemini? They, everyone used to say Gemini, and then they came out and said the proper pronunciation is Gemini. Anymore. Really? I'll the newspaper article. I'll, yeah. Oh. It's actually, nice. Gemini. Yeah. You got receipts. <laughs> on one fire. We still get up there and push the envelope every single day. And maybe, maybe today's the day you don't come back. We all know that. It's always there, but we get up there anyway and we keep taking the risks. But we stop taking risks at NASA. And that's why we lost the move. That's a whole conversation is the risks of NASA and how much is NASA willing to take, you know? Yeah. Thanks, yeah. yeah, the whole like failure failure is not an option and quality. Yep. But we don't have guts at NASA anymore. That's why we didn't beat the Russians to the moon. You were the my friend. How do you let his guard down? Calls. Yeah. Von Braun wants you reassigned to the Apollo Applications Project, effective immediately. Or are you taking me off Apollo 15? You took you off 15. The code says you're not supposed to talk about those things. That's what you said, not with your buddies, not with your family, not with your wife. This is nothing to do. I mean, who knew? Who knew that all it took was a couple of drinks in a dive bar for you to break that code? I'm going to learn to drink with the guys. Yeah, because then I can find out how my husband really feels about his job. Or I'll just read about it in the newspapers with everyone else. Woo! Right? He has a point. Awkward. What the hell y'all looking at? Never seen a lowly pud knocker from Apollo Applications? Oof. They're pissed. Oof. <sighs> Look, uh, I know there was some dumb son of a bitch that shot his mouth off in the press and made the whole agency look bad. But I, I also know that the crew of Apollo 11 is going to make everyone forget about all that. Because Neil, Buzz, Mike, they're the kind of guys who don't fold when things get tough. I think Siberia sits over there. 
You know what Ziegler said? The president doesn't usually call the silver medalist. Got it. Ooh. It wasn't easy, but I got Ouch. it. Just glad we remembered. Just as well. It was always just oh. extra weight. I just keep thinking about how smoky that room must have been. <laughs> they smoke well, a, a lot in this ago, show. I thought I knew Lord. what today was all about. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was about being first. Turns out the stakes are much bigger than that. I just don't love this rhetoric, though, about how, like, if I we're not there, we're not. Like, it's funny how in this show they, like, make the argument that, like, oh, that if the U.S. wasn't there day. winning, then they're not going to be a part of the Pretty future. Cool. But then at the same time, we're like, oh, no, a, a victory for the U.S. is a victory for everyone. And it's like, I don't know. It just feels very hypocritical. No, I agree completely. That's a good point. Oh, I love the moon. I know. So pretty. Why don't you give us an idea of the land? <laughs> I do wonder, like, how much of people, like, being obsessed with space is, like, escapism. You know what yeah. I mean? Stupid. That would be an interesting, like, psychology. Yeah, yes. Ooh. <laughs> that would be interesting. We should talk about it on Clubhouse. Deal. Let's do it. <laughs> oh. Here you go, Columbia, Houston. All systems are looking good for going over the hill. Ten seconds to LOS. Roger that. Roger that, Houston. Talk to you on the like other The side. graphics are so good. God, I want to go to the moon. I have a um, feeling you like you will go to the moon. God, I hope so. I've got, I've got my moon right Ooh. here. <laughs> I love it. For Edward to make a public denial, stating emphatically that Did you watch the uh, the right stuff on like Dis I think it was Disney it came out recently. I think I've seen like four episodes. Yeah, it was decent. Yeah, I also I'll probably end up watching it all anyway. No matter how good it is, I'll probably end up watching it. <laughs> I know. I mean, if I suffered through a season with Sean Penn in the first or whatever that was called, then I can get through anything. <laughs> Come on now, Neil. You got this, buddy. Right down the pipe. Okay, gather around, gather around. Why? I don't understand why the men aren't like with their wives and kids. Like, what? I was thinking that earlier. 75 feet. Rocks everywhere. Still looking for a spot to set down. He's outside the safety margin. Should we abort? Neil knows the situation. It's his spacecraft now. Oh boy. Lights on, 20 feet. Picking oh. up some dust. A lot of dust. Drifting right. Watch that one. I'm scared. Watch it. We've we can talk about dust in a second. No bio oh no. Lost contact. AGC is negative. Oh, God. No data from the onboard computer. Flat, I've got nothing here. No the whole board. No, uh, no. Oh, my God. Settle down, people. Settle! Capcom, see if you can raise a limb. Eagle Houston, do you read? These are independent systems. They could not fail simultaneously unless there was a catastrophic event. So they crashed. Most likely. <laughs> if they are alive, what's our contingency plan? There is no contingency plan. There is no way to effect a rescue from the lunar surface. Columbia can't do this. Tranquility in 54 can't do this. There's a telescope on Could you board. imagine? Maybe Mike can see something from orbit. Imagine it being Michael Collins. Do you no. Although, to track. be fair, better to be him than Buzz and Neil right now, but, True. yeah. True. <laughs> I don't think, like, what is Buzz thinking watching this right now? You know what I mean? You know he's seen this. He's like, the assholes. <laughs> okay, this is not how I remember it. <laughs> there. Don't know if you can see this. I don't see anything. Oh, Mark's got a better view through the scope. We're just looking at a shitty TV screen. I see Eagle. 
I'd say she's about six to eight miles southwest of the targeted landing site. But I feel like this is actually like a really somber reminder of like, space is hard. Yeah, and like also like, are we gonna think about the moon differently if there's some like catastrophe up there? I'm staying right where I am. Columbia out. Oh God, can you imagine being his wife? Yeah, I would be a little mad. Oh, I would God. be a little mad. I'd be oh. like, you need to come home now. <laughs> oh. Tranquility Base, Houston. Neil, is that you? I can't get I can't do this. I can't get I knew. I knew the whole time. You're such a jerk. I had to fake it. Oh, I hate this. I'm not doing any more of these. <laughs> yeah. That's the win they needed, though. Like, I see why they did that. Because, like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's the win they needed. It was like, even bigger than if they had landed successfully, you know? Now we gotta get them home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm fine. I love a good astronaut hop. I love the astronaut hop. I want to see an astronaut hop. Okay, so Bailey, you had oh, some thoughts. I have so many thoughts. I'm mostly mad at you, but that's okay. <laughs> Did I do a good job of like faking it that they that they died? I, I definitely thought that. I guess yeah, no, I thought that they were they were goners, and I was like, okay, how are they gonna come back from this? They're gonna come back yeah. with it, like the women thing. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh my gosh. I have a lot when you of think about it, that would have been a really depressing first episode, right? They like lose the space race and then like Neil, Buzz, like Mike Collins, they all die. Like that would be awful. So and like, come back for episode two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, but seriously, what do you think? Do you, are you like into the show or? I am mostly because that emotional journey that just happened of the like last 10 minutes there, that was intense. That was intense. Yeah. Um, I like it. I think kind of one of the things we were talking about was like going back to that different time. It's hard mm -hmm. to put yourself into that mindset. Yeah. Because we try, I mean, people say it all the time. It's not a justification, um, but it is something to consider, you know, that it was a different time um, mm -hmm. and different norms and that kind of stuff. And I think one of the most frustrating things, honestly, was like how much some of the things haven't changed, you know, oh, like. Wow. It's been 60 years. You'd think they would change by a lot more than they have. Yeah, but it's still, like, a lot of the same stuff, especially, like, yeah, I mean, obviously, like, you know, and, like, probably anybody that's, like, heard of this show knows that, like, we get some female astronauts, which is cool. But, um, but I mean, at the same time, yeah, it's, like, it's, it's still, like, the super, like, male-dominated space. And, like, honestly, it looks pretty similar to this day. And like, also just in term, I feel like the one thing that I hope that we kind of change is that instead of making space so like geopolitical, like realizing that like longevity comes from people just being interested in like the science, the tech, the exploration, and like also making it like more inclusive to everybody, like having everybody feel like they can see themselves in these like shows and scenarios, because yeah, I mean, it does make me kind of mad. Like as much as I love watching space shows, I'm just like not seeing, you know, more representation. It makes me mad. Yeah. And what, what I'm kind of doing now is like, I love space history. That's why I had all these like random facts and I know dates and stuff like that. I love learning about space history, but more than that, I also love watching history being made right now. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. like you do start seeing that representation and stuff like that. So that's been really good, at least for me to be studying both space history and then keeping up with the now. Yeah. Um, one thing you touched on, it's not just like how much hasn't changed, um, but one of the things he said when he was talking to the reporter, or I guess when the wife was yelling at him for talking to the reporter, she was like, the code says you, you don't talk about your emotions. And mm -hmm. like, that's such a big thing. And even modern day, to some extent, astronauts are supposed to be very stoic, um, yeah. they're getting to be more charismatic and like people based and friendly. You got like Le Leland Melvin and Chris Hadfield and uh, Christina Cook. They're very much like personalities. Yeah. Still is that you don't show emotions. Yeah. And I think I know. 
Which it's like, if we're not like, I mean, how, like this entire experience is like so emotional. It's like, how could you not, you know, how could you not show emotions? And it's just like, I feel like it's so dangerous, like this whole mentality. So I really hope we're moving away from that whole right stuff mentality, right? Like where you can't be emotional. You have to be super macho. Like that is such a toxic culture And I cannot imagine anything worse than being like confined to a lunar base with a bunch of people that have that mentality. Like that would be terrible. Yeah. So yeah. You're going to cut out a lot of the population for that reason. If you know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. if if that's the way you want to be, that's cool, but you can't limit it space to that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like at a certain point. Well, I was just going to say at a certain point, like this whole like astronaut culture, it's like, we're going to have to move away from that. You know, like if we actually, if we're serious about wanting to like live and work in space, like it's not going to look like that anymore. So people have to just like, let that go. You know, I agree agree completely. And I mean, when we start getting actual, like small clusters of people, as opposed to just like seven to nine people on the space station, you're going to have to start seeing different personalities and stuff for sure. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, it's like, everybody's done that like well I don't know maybe at their jobs like I feel like I've had jobs where we do like personality tests and then we do like exercises where it's like okay who gets along with who and you know why and how do you communicate out how to work with people I agree I think that's gonna be a huge part of moving forward I don't know honestly I don't know if it's gonna be something that we see in like NASA or even SpaceX for that extreme but I think it's something that as we start seeing more people go to space, someone's going to step up and be like, my group is going to be emotionally intelligent. (laughs) Someone is eventually going to step up and do that. And it's probably going to be like, you know, uh, a woman led (laughs) woman led group. But yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. So, all right. So we've got, Oh, go ahead. I had another thing that you said about, like her getting ready, Margot, yeah. I think, her getting yeah. ready and stuff like that. Okay, quick little space history fact tidbit. Um, I don't know if, you, do you know who the Mercury 13 are? Yeah. Okay, love the Mercury 13. It comes up, it comes up in the show too. Oh, great. Okay, great. That's awesome. I love it. Um, so the Mercury 13 are a group of women who went through like the same uh, training and testing as the Mercury astronauts. Um, and a lot of them did equally as well or better in some of the scenarios but they never got the chance to fly. Well, there's a great book about them. I love it so much. And in like the opening section of it is, I can't remember which Mercury 13 member it was. I, for the life of me, I cannot remember. I have the book and I can go look, but she was talking about how she was like landing her plane. She just broke a world record or something like that. She's getting ready to land her plane and she's literally doing her makeup and her hair in the cockpit, putting on high heeled shoes so that when she gets out of the cockpit, she can be beautiful. And it's like, can you, I mean, and this is, this is truly how it was back then. It yeah. was not only do you break a world record, but you have to look like a movie star by the time you land. Like, of course yeah. you were sweating and not beautiful, yeah. but it was, I don't know, fix yourself. And then you're allowed to land, you know, like, I just, honestly, I just go back to how much time, like the productivity lost, like how much time women spent, like just taking care of all of that stuff. And it's like, oh my gosh, like that's so much time wasted where you like, you could have been doing other things. I mean, it's really, it's really shocking. Like someone should do a study of like the average woman in like the 60s. Like how, yeah. How many, how many like days out of her average year did she spend doing makeup? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. That's a great point. Mm. Okay. Well, another thing you said was talking about what if someone well okay so this was kind of a huge theme throughout it was like space death what if someone died on the moon i had like what if apollo because they were talking about why didn't they land apollo 10 Mm -hmm. well that was one of the questions i had originally was like okay what if they had landed apollo 10 and someone died when they did that what kind of message would that have sent like Mm -hmm. we're gonna push the boundaries even if it means we kill someone you know like yeah dangerous and then on top of that what if they had died on the moon. Like you said, now when you look at the moon, you don't see future. You see there's two dead bodies up there. I know. Like, can you imagine yeah. that? Like, no, I know. Crazy. It's like really, it's really like disturbing to think about. Um, yeah, I mean. It's a different I future. It's a yeah. different future, 100%. Well, so that's why like, yeah, as much as like, I mean, because we were talking about how like 
it's important to have innovation, but then like, yeah, at the same time, that whole like failure, failure is not an option mentality. In some ways it's kind of bad, but then in other ways it's kind of like, well, but yeah, exactly. Like for that reason, it's kind of like it's such a devastating blow like that it could really have like ended, ended the program. I mean, honestly, I'm surprised that in some ways that like the catastrophes that NASA has had and the human lives that have been lost, that that actually hasn't created more of a roadblock, like for the program. Like I'm, I'm actually pretty surprised that it kind of continued on. So it's interesting. I mean, I think, I mean, and this is the other thing. And like, I mean, I, and this is what is concerning me too now is that I actually feel like we're moving very far away from that where instead of being like overly cautious about it, I think we're like being a little bit like overly reckless because now a lot of what I've heard from people like, and like people that I feel like should know better than to say this, but they've been talking about how like, well, yeah, it's just, of course people are going to go to Mars and they're going to die and they shouldn't expect to come home. And it's just like, oh, like, you know, we, I, I mean, really like, have we not evolved past this kind of thinking? And it's just like, we, I mean, the fact that like, it's so, it's more, the more commonplace, like being a civilian astronaut becomes, I think the less we're going to, like, people are going to care about whether or not there's that like risk to human life, which makes me sad. It does make me sad as well. And I mean, you see it with airplanes, you know, when airplanes first came to be as very dangerous and people died and, and stuff like that, but now people go on flights every day. So I think it's kind of like the natural progression there. Yeah. Um, but I do think, cause we have not had a space accident in a while, in a hot mm. second. It has been mm. a while. Um, and I think a lot of people were young enough or like me, not really born or in the space industry um, that, that they have forgotten that, you know what I mean? Like yeah. they forgot what that felt like when Challenger, Apollo one, Columbia, all these different things happened. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I wanted to bring up is we haven't really had death in space yet. Yeah. I think there's kind of like a gray area with a, an accident with three astronauts, or I think they were cosmonauts. But most of the deaths have been upon entry or launch, which means mm -hmm. they, they've happened under the Kármán line and they've not been technically in space. Mm -hmm. So when we have that person that dies in orbit, dies on the moon, dies on Mars, something like that. Yeah. The first time it happens, I think it's going to shake up a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm curious to see how that goes. And I had this thought, I was like, what if we just send like a hero who's like dying to be like the first person and just like get it over with, you know what I mean? And like, it's a heroic death and we just like can be happy about it as opposed to it being a huge mass accident, you know? Oh my gosh. I don't know. Like, what are the ethical implications of that? That's true too. I've never, yeah. I've never thought of that before. <laughs> now we're talking like euthanasia and stuff. And it's I know, all <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, wow, that's, yeah, I don't know. It is interesting. I feel like society is going to change a lot as space travel becomes like a lot more commonplace. I agree. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I don't know. So stay tuned. One more thing. An, oh, yeah. One more thing. Margot is based off of Francis Poppy North Cat, North Cut. Oh, okay. There you go. She yeah. seems adorable. Okay. Like if you look at her like actual Wikipedia page and stuff, I'll do some more research into her, but she seems adorable. I like her. So I like Margot a lot. Yeah. We'll Margot is cool. Margot cool. is cool. We'll I like, I like Tracy too. She becomes more of a character as we go on. Is Tracy the wife? That well, though she's one of the wives. She's okay. the blonde one. The other okay. one is Karen. Oh, and Karen. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can talk about astronaut wives sometime too. That's a fascinating, like, thing of in itself but yeah no it's I been love a long it. night so I'm glad thank you for doing this with me <laughs> <laughs> I know thanks for being here everyone we're gonna be uh we're gonna be doing episode two here soon so uh you can check out our reaction video on that as well all right thanks Bailey bye everyone good night bye